Oh, hey, everybody. Karen Bryan here with you, and I've got Matt Schnell kicking back with me right now. He is fighting Steve Urseg at UFC Vegas 87. That, of course, is the one with Biggie and uh, Gadziev at the main event, the heavyweights on there. But look at Matt. It's been a minute since you have fought. I know you were scheduled a couple times in 2023, but we haven't seen you since December 22. So I'm guessing you're kind of itching to get back, huh? Definitely itching to get back. Looking forward to being back in there. This will be my first time at the Apex, fighting at the Apex. So that will be an experience. But yeah, uh, took took a little bit of a hiatus for my son, an intentional hiatus. And then the last two fights just haven't worked out. And uh, But here we are. Yeah. Well, it's funny because you, you touched on a couple things I wanted to ask you about because you're one of the rare people who has gotten to fight in front of a crowd so much. But uh, so I wanted to get into that with you. But so let's talk about the, you know, the personal time. Obviously, it's great to take some time off when you have children and all that. But um, so that was the design. You really wanted to kind of be home for a while and just be a dad. Yeah, I uh, I have I, this is my second child. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the first one, we kind of did the same thing, took a couple of months afterwards to mm -hmm. just settle in and, and fulfill my paternal duties, but just kind of get a hang of having another being in our household to take care of it. It's uh, it's an adjustment to be made. We were making it though. And we, uh, you know, he's, he's a year old now. Mm -hmm. Happy to report he's a great little guy and uh, okay. we're going to keep him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So far he checks out. He's all right. Yes. That's good. <laughs> I only have one child. I tell my daughter all the time. Though, I'm like, look, you're the best kid I ever had. So you got that going for you. <laughs> you <Okay. know? laughs> but that's pretty excellent. So with the um, fights that did fall through, though, a rescheduling type thing, um, was that an injury type thing? Was that just something where there was because one time I think it was like undisclosed and it just didn't say why and it just kind of didn't happen. Yeah. In June, I hurt my hand. So yeah. this was this was right before we were leaving. And I just really bonked my hand and uh, wasn't able to get out there. Then November, Madison Square Garden broke my heart, but I got staph infection. It was a fairly advanced form of staph infection, too. And just due to the location and everything, mm -hmm. it was just one that we couldn't uh, tough it out on. So unfortunate circumstances uh, broke my heart both times. But sometimes things just go the way they go. And what can you do? I would imagine staff anywhere is bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're glad that you're here now. And, you know, it's interesting, though, because a lot of time planned or unplanned, the time off can be good for you, obviously. Right. So there there can be little injuries that also healing up along the way or other things. But also it gives you time to kind of just sit back and watch the division, see what's going on. Obviously, you know, we're talking right now in advance of Roy Vall and, and Moreno fighting. But um, what do you make of, of sort of the landscape now as you're about to jump back in? Hey, completely different landscape than it was uh, 15 months ago or yeah. 14 months ago when I last competed. But uh, I think that's just a testament to the UFC, the matchmakers, Mick Maynard in particular, the job he's done with mm -hmm. the flyweight division because there's definitely been an influx of talent. And uh, the, the division, in my opinion, is as interesting as it's ever been. And uh, I might be a little biased in that, but I haven't been fighting, so I'm not too biased. So I, I think uh, the the young guys, they're good. They keep me up at night, too. They're a bunch of talented, up-and-coming, uh, fresh faces, uh, good good skill sets. You know, even even the guy that I'm – he's the, the guy I'm about to fight, he kind of – he's one of those – uh, fresh face, talented, exciting guys, and uh, yeah, those types of fights that that I want. So uh, it's it's good, it's cool. Nice. So yeah, you are fighting Steve Urseg. He's an Australian guy. Um, what do you what do you make of that matchup? What what did you think when they presented you with that name? Because you are the veteran now, and uh, you know we see so many times now veterans versus the young upstarts and that kind of thing. And yeah, your name's got your name has cachet. Everybody knows you're going to bring an exciting fight, and and I would imagine the other guys excited to fight you. So what do you think of when you get his name? He's a. Uh... This is not, I was supposed to fight him in November, so we yeah. did a whole camp preparing for him, and so I am quite familiar with Steve Urseg. I think he's really talented. I think he makes good decisions. He's a great competitor, uh, fast, sharp, talented. Uh, he's he's got a lot going for him. I think he can grapple, uh, but he's he's really come into his own. I mean, he he can strike. He likes to strike. He's got a sharp jab, uh, good range too. It, it looks like it's kind of difficult to, to get a hold of him. So uh, 
uh, yeah, I've, I've been very impressed with him. I was impressed with him when he fought Dvorak and then, mm -hmm. you know, even more impressed with him after Costa because in the Dvorak fight, you're coming in, you're kind of, it's not, it's, you can't lose that fight. There's, it's yeah. a, it's a win-win situation for him. He performs well. You kind of are like, okay, good for him. That's something that's, that's expected. And then he loses the fight with me. He fights Costa and then it's kind of the opposite, everything to lose. And then still he goes out and has a great performance. I thought Costa looked pretty dang good too. So yeah, uh, it, it just, an, again, a testament to where this division is, how, how much ground it's covered uh, in the last 15 months. And it's incumbent on me to prove that uh, it's not left me behind yet. So mm -hmm. that's, yeah. uh, that's what we're going to do. So if you've already done one camp for him and you're doing this again, have you, who did you prepare with? Did you, um, I mean, you've had a lot of time to think about this guy now. So, yeah, what, what have you done to prepare for him? Who have you trained with? And did you bring anybody to specifically sort of, you know, recreate what he does? Or just in general, you're just kind of training the hard all day, every day? Training with taller, taller, longer yeah. guys. Uh, and, and we've got those guys in my stable. So it, it yeah. wasn't much of an adjustment. Uh, I would say, though, Moreno and uh, Safe Saud, they've been in – Mexico City. So I had to yeah. make some adjustments for my camp, but they were uh, easy to make. I live in Houston, Texas. There's a lot of really talented, young, long, up and coming guys around here. So it wasn't yeah. uh, it wasn't very difficult to uh, make the switch. And it's actually been quite nice to, to keep it at home and not be away to Dallas a couple of days yeah. a week. So uh, but shout out Coach Safe. I'll see him here in a couple of days. Looking forward to it. Uh, he's been in tune with us and uh, we, we know what the, you know, we know the task at hand. It's just yeah. about going out there and uh, getting it done. You know, and it's interesting because we, we were talking at the beginning here. So it is the first time you're fighting at Apex. You were scheduled to fight at Apex once before, right? And then that was that last minute thing where day, at way in day, right? Um, the yeah. fight was called off, right? That was such a bummer. But so you are, it literally is on my thing to ask you about. It was like you, you're the reverse situation, right? Like so many people have been frustrated to only be fighting at the Apex and they've been dying to get back in front of a crowd. And you've had the great fortune of being in front of the crowds and all of these. Um, so, I mean, yeah, what are you expecting with the Apex? Because the, the, I guess I would say the plus side that some people say they like about it is being able to hear the coaches, feeling small and intimate and feeling maybe less pressure. But at the same time, you seem to be a guy, sometimes all you have to do is look at the Sumo Derji fight or something, like you seem to be a guy that thrives in the high pressure situation. So I'm wondering how you will feel about fighting at the apex. Yeah, I think the pressure lies in the guy I'm standing across from though. Yeah. You know, and I do think that this is one of, this is a challenging fight for me. We've been mm -hmm. uh, busy uh, toiling our hands hard at work. So uh, that, that's what I look forward to. The, the I, I did the ultimate fighter. So I yeah. fought in a more intimate uh, setting. I'm, I'm also, you know, I grew up in this regional scene. I fought in front of a ruckus crowd of 19. <laughs> it's not yeah. much different. So uh, I, I don't know. I look forward to it. It'll be fun to be in the apex for the yeah. first time. Anytime we bring up the, the time that I was supposed to do it, it's just, it still frustrates me to this I'm day. Sorry. I'm not over that, but uh, it's all good. Uh, th there are things that we can take care of a little bit better and, and I will. So, uh, yeah, just it it it, it is a, a different opportunity, but much the same. It's a dead gum fist fight in the UFC octagon, so uh, it's gonna be fun. I think I, I feel like I saw you at the hotel or something, even when you were leaving that. Like that was all when we were all still in the bubble and everything, mm -hmm. right? I think mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. So was it? It was just a bad cut that day. It wasn't even a bad. I mean, it, they're all bad cuts. Yeah, the, the right. They suck. They all suck. <laughs> I, I I was struggling afterwards. Like I. I took my first drink and I was just kind of nauseous there. Yeah. And that, that happens sometimes. So I, I was sitting in the back uh, after I had made weight and yes, a, a little, a little nauseous, but I didn't puke. I didn't gag. Nothing of the sort happened. Uh, and it was, it was a time that wasn't very busy, you know, like mm -hmm. I weighed in pretty early, but not like yeah. the first. So it was kind of a dead time. And I feel like people were just looking for something to do. It started with like an EMT walked over to me. He was just checking in on me. Yeah. Then one of the Nevada State uh, doctors came over and he was super concerned. And uh, he he essentially called the fight right then and there. And, and it was, uh, yeah, it was wild. That sucks. Yeah. That sucks. 
but water under the bridge, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's happened in the past. It is what it is. You're here to throw it out. You know, I did want to ask you because, you know, I've mentioned the Sumaderji fight and I, I forget here what you've got, like you're coming up like two fight of the nights in your last three fights or something like that. So I'm curious, were you a guy, have you always had heart? You know, have, have you been a person and no matter what you did, you always had heart? Because when you look at your fights, especially the Sumaderji one, and that was the one on ABC and everybody was freaking out, like you came back and won that fight. And we conventionally, it's, you know, that saying that you can't teach heart, but I wonder if you can or cannot, or is that something you just always had? Yeah, I've always been an effort guy, and I, I played sports and uh, tried really hard my whole life and really didn't yeah. have much success, and I think even when I was done with sports, kind of what drove me into fighting was I, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder because I, I didn't feel like I ever got to express myself mm -hmm. properly, but yeah, I think if you uh, talk to my first ever Pop Warner football coach, he wouldn't, he'd tell you that he's not surprised, so... It, it is what it is. I'm built for this. I'm uh, I'm uh, down for a scrap, 100%. I love that. My dad used to coach Pop Warner football, so uh, I like I, lo I love that visual. Um, and yeah, it, it is interesting. You know, people have said people who decry MMA, they say it used to be fighters who then went into an athletic pursuit, and now people are like it's being ruined by athletes. You know what I mean? Who are co coming over and trying to fight and that they're, they're trying to say they're different people. Do you think you've seen a different kind of mindset in the kind of people that are fighting now since you have been here for a minute? I think that's kind of what's so beautiful about fighting is it can be all types of people, you know, mm -hmm. and there are certain like archetypes of people that come to mind, like guys that maybe aren't necessarily the most talented, the most athletic, the most mm -hmm. spry but are just tough and don't get tired. We know those guys, right? And they're trouble in MMA. And then there, there are the guys who are just A-plus athletes that can just get it done because they're so capable. So, yeah, I think that's uh, that's kind of always existed. And you, you see it, it is more uh, – there is, like, more of a dynamic arc to it now just because fighting, has, you know, you can make a living doing this and – and there's a lot of opportunity here. So you are seeing guys who are better athletes get into it. But yeah, I, I uh, that's one of the things I love most about fighting is any anybody, it can all types, you know, if you're able to hone in and focus and understand too who you are, because if you are a tough guy that's not the most spry and, and talented and, and uh, even technical, like it, that's important to know. So it's like, okay, I got to be dirty. I got to make this ugly. This is the fight I can win. But uh, yeah, I love it. That's the, that's the art in it all. Yeah, and you've been in so many incredible fights. Um, and I, <laughs> since the end, from, from, I remember from Tough Talk. Now, did, did you get to keep the picture of Kenny? I forget. Do you have the autographed picture of Kenny Florian? No, no. I, I think the Okay, other maybe it's Pettis that has it then. Pettis I, got, Pettis, okay, I would have yeah. taken it home. I doubt he, he didn't leave with it. I would have. It'd be, it'd be hanging up right here. Yeah, that's yeah, right. As it should be. Yeah, he didn't take it home. Oh, damn. I do remember, though. I'm going to have to look for it. I think I'm pretty sure I have a picture of you and me and Kenny with you and the picture. Yeah, but yeah, maybe definitely. you didn't get to keep it's it. It's out there. Oh, it's good stuff. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been really entertaining watching you fight. Like, which have you had? Um, if I were to tell people like, OK, look at I got to show you who this fart person is in two or three fights, like three of Matt, two or three of Matt's fights to define who he is. Which one should I show somebody? Yeah, I think you got to show a little bit of it all. So yes. uh, one, a fight that I'm really proud of was Lewis Smolka. I fought Lewis Smolka. I was petrified of him just because I looked up to him and I had a lot of respect for him. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a good performance. I think uh, I fought Pantoja. I fought the champ. Uh, yeah. And that, that's one you can dial back. You can see the, the best of me and the worst of me all play out within four minutes when, he, you know, he, he clipped me and he got me out of there. And then you'd have to you'd have to put the Sumi Dershi fight in there, too. Yeah. But uh, th those types of fights I've always been in. There's there's other ones out there, too, that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy I had the opportunity to kind of, you know, show what I'm made of. I think yes. the Sumi Dershi fight is one that uh, captures that. But I've got. This will be my 13th fight in the UFC, and uh, I, I think we're always just a couple different decisions away from being in a completely different position, and I still believe, I still think I can get it done. 
Nice. Well, you give people a lot of reason to believe in you. You're always very entertaining. Before I let you go, I should ask, who do you think will be victorious in Mexico? Will it be Roy Vall or will it be Moreno? I, I train with Moreno. I, and me, we, say, we share Coach Safe, so I'm not going to pick yeah. – against uh moreno but roy val's tough i've been in there with him too and he can yeah. he's a guy that can pull it out of his hat and get it done at any any point so he's dangerous for 25 minutes i do think that a variable in that is the altitude but you know sure. moreno's prepared he's he's been there for a minute now you know uh, i i actually did a camp with moreno back in whenever he fought sergio i was i was one okay. of his main training partners back then and he brought me in for that camp uh, and, and it was grueling but uh, Roy Val does train at altitude, so yep. I don't think it's going to be much of a difference for him. So that'll be interesting, something to keep an eye on. Um, but, yeah, it's tough to pick against the former champ, Brandon Moran. It's tough to pick against. I, it literally is, you know, it's that whole corny thing, like who wins? The fans win in this That's one right. because, you know, I've always said it too about just your division in general, and I say it with love. It's like watching cats in a bag, like fight, and it's just so fun because – the beginning, like the beginning of round one, could have the same tempo as the end of round five with you guys. Like the the cardio, the endurance is incredible. The skill level is so high, um, and to me, it's just always been really, really fun to watch your division. So, uh, you guys are just always money. I'm glad it never went away. <laughs> yeah, now I'm one of the uh, only survivors of the flyweight purge. Yeah. So that's uh, something something that's interesting. But yeah, it's come a long way. Huge fan of the division. I'm always rooting for these guys. Uh, yeah. here, here in the interview previous, somebody asked me if I had any beef with you know Perez or any of these guys that I've run in. None whatsoever. And right. In fact, all I do is root for these guys. I'm a fan of the sport first and foremost. I watch them all. Yeah, and, uh, yeah rooting for everybody, rooting for the division. Team Flyweight, and unless you're fighting me, uh, I, I just wish you the best. <laughs> exactly exactly well i love it i'm um, happy to catch up with you and happy to see you back in action so it'll be roughly sort of 14 months ish since we last saw you so everybody should look forward to that fighting steve urseg on march 2nd i believe right uh and uh yeah looking forward to that one in vegas at the apex matt thank you so much for kicking back and uh, i'll see you out in vegas let's go